While we're talking politics, Max said, is it OK that Amber Rudd still thinks it's OK to use the term coloured when referring to Diane Abbott? Yes, the Work and Pension Secretary did refer to Diane Abbott this week as a coloured woman during a radio interview, which is ironic because she's the one called Amber. Uh, <laughs> Rudd has apologised and said, I'm mortified at my clumsy language, but I is clumsy the right word? No, no, no she's, no, she's not a 97-year-old gran. That's the kind of person that makes that mistake. Yeah, no one's ever described the American South in the 60s as a bit clumsy. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, it's 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 bad. It's very very poor. Yeah, and um, look, yes, Alex. Well, she was minister for equality once. <laughs> yeah, you'd think she'd know the terms. Yeah. And look, here's the weird thing. Last week, uh, you helped us tweet this invitation to Amber Rudd to see if she wanted to come on the show. She did respond after the show with a tweet. Oh, of I forgot own. we were trying to get her on. Actually, I don't think it was that bad what she did. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she Be tweeted after now. the show saying. Uh, Message heard loud and clear last week, but first I've got an important speech on Tuesday at Scope where I'll explain how I will make Britain a better place for people with disabilities. Sadly, at that speech, she said, just get rid of them. Well, <laughs> she did say in her speech she wanted to get... <laughs> she said she wanted to get rid of the stigma surrounding benefits claims and that 270,000 disabled pensioners would no longer undergo repeat assessments. So, steps in the right direction. Yeah. Unfortunately, she called the speech reducing pips for crips. So, you know, two <laughs> steps forward. Two step forward, one step back. That was the other potential name for the speech, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that wasn't the name of the speech. But you did... You looked into it, Alex. What did you make of her speech? I, I, look, I think that, you know... And the, the PIP assessment, they're, ju they're just so awful that any, any kind of... Anything it would, would be progress yeah. from here. And I kind of... I, the thing that struck me is that she said that they were going to commission some research into the impact that it's had on disabled people yeah. having these PIP assessments. But I can save her a few quid. It's awful. It's been humiliating. Yeah. You know, like, I, I underwent one. It's the most humiliating thing I've ever gone through as a disabled person. And it's not the idea of being assessed for a benefit, because I understand that's how the system would work. It's the fact that someone's questioning something that you live with every day. The fact that they're, you know, they're, they're what... And then, even after you explain to them, they don't fully understand what it's like to live a life in your shoe, or shoe. Um, <laughs> yeah. it, it's, you know, until they fundamentally get, you know, get to the bottom of what disabled people are going through. Yep. They can say all this, but they just need to speak to a couple of them and just understand this system is so wrong and it's caused so many people so many problems and such heartache. And that's... You said you wanted to do a play because you found uh, touring and doing stand-up very lonely. Very lonely. Are you joking? Very, yeah, yes. Oh, it's your tour no. support. I found it lonely and depressing. <laughs> <laughs>